Today's economy for developers is an absolute mess. Many of you have probably already been affected by this, just like I have when I was let go from my job over the summer just a few months ago. For that reason, I'm encouraging people to take more and more energy and effort into building their own revenue streams and freelancing as a web developer is a great way to do that. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make money as a freelance developer with tips and tricks along the way to hopefully put you in a position to add some supplementary or necessary income during some of these tough times in tech. What's up everyone, my name is James Q. Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've seen videos in the past, welcome back. Always glad to have you. So I talked a little bit about just kind of the state of the economy. Um, every day I feel like a friend of mine or someone I know casually online talks about being let go. And one of the things I've talked about that's been really important for me is as I got let, let go, I had an audience and a business to lean on and now I get to do that full time. And understandably, that's not something that people can flip a switch and do overnight, but I do want to encourage people to look at potential ways to build their own business or just to build side income to help themselves if something were to happen. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I wanna talk a little bit about my experience as a freelance developer. I don't have a ton of experience. I'll have a couple of links to a few other articles uh, or actually podcast episodes from people like Wes Boss and Scott Talinsky from the Syntax Podcast and Amy Dutton from our Compressed FM Podcast where you can go find more about their background. But what I did was I ended up building WordPress sites for a few different places and I had a host where I could host, uh, I don't know how many, uh, I think unlimited amount of WordPress sites on this one hosting plan. So I paid the one hosting plan and I was able to host all these different sites and make a little bit of money as a freelance developer using WordPress. Now, I know some people kind of question, is WordPress still worth learning and yada, yada, yada. The answer is absolutely. WordPress is still incredibly popular both from a development standpoint and then from a consumer standpoint slash a marketing standpoint. So if I build a WordPress site, there's a lot of people out there that are used to working in WordPress. So I can hand that off cleanly and have them kind of go and manage that from then on. So WordPress is still one of the most common examples you'll hear about uh, a tool that makes it as easy as possible and straightforward to freelance as a web developer. Real quick, if you have a freelancing portfolio, drop a link in the comments below so that I can check it out and then other people can get some inspiration from the stuff that you've done. So that's what I wanna talk about today is a little bit of my experience in freelancing. We'll talk about how to find clients, how to do taxes, how to do uh, emails and freelance project, different types of freelance projects, et cetera. But this is gonna kind of start with our host, which is Hostinger. And Hostinger is an amazing place that you can host WordPress sites. You can actually host on the premium shared plan you can host up to 100 sites. They have awesome support and tons of other features, which makes it a really nice place for you to host multiple projects and kind of build a side business as a freelance developer. Now, this is timed intentionally because they currently have a Black Friday deal going on that you can check out. I actually have an exclusive link at hostinger.com slash James. Not gonna lie, that feels like a moment where I can say I made it if I have just my first name as a link but you'll have a link to that in the description below and you can use that to take advantage of an extra percentage off of the plan that you end up signing up for. So really quickly, if I scroll down on the hosting or homepage, I can go down to web hosting and go to add to cart. And then inside of add to cart, you can see this is going to reference the premium shared plan and you'll save the most money if you enroll for a two year plan. Now the benefit of this is you can put up up to hundred sites on this plan and be able to have as many clients as you want. So you can see when I add the coupon code here, I get an extra percentage off, which is what you can do right now. So you'll be able to use the link in the description below, hostinger.com slash James, and then apply the coupon code in James as well to get that extra percentage off. At the end of the video, I'll show you hands-on how the Hostinger dashboard and their panel can help manage all this stuff really, really easily. But let's get started with how do you actually get started with freelancing? And the biggest question that people have is how do I find clients? And the short answer is that's probably one of the biggest challenges that you'll find. So there's lots of different ways to do this. I think one good piece of advice here is if you want to be known for something, if you want people to know that you can do something like freelancing, like building sites, the thing is you have to talk about that. So how do you do that? Well, you show up at meetups and you introduce yourself as a web developer and you say you also do freelance projects on the side, for example. If you go on a podcast or you create a piece of content, create a piece of content that references you as a freelance developer. Now, another thing you can do is not only attend meetups from a communicating to other people what you do, 
also just from a networking perspective so that you can meet more and more people who may be looking for websites. So some easy things that you can do is just go to small restaurants or small businesses in your area and just go in and ask, hey, would you be interested in me doing a website for you so that people can find you easier, you can have good SEO, you can show people what your hours are and how to contact you, et cetera. If you can find small businesses that don't yet have that, those are usually pretty good places to start. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, hey, how do I just walk in and convince someone that I'm the person to do this for the first time? I think one of the things that is important is to have one or two projects that you've done so far that you can then reference to other people as you go to pitch to them that you want to create a site. So for example, for me, I did a free website for my sister when she was working on their studio where they did art workshops and camps and that sort of stuff. So I did a website from her. I did a website for a friend a few different places that I could do websites for free, they get the value, but I get the experience and then the references and the portfolio projects that I can then tell other people and show other people to give them an idea of what I'm capable of. Obviously, you'll want to make these projects something that you're really proud of, something that you think will help convince other people that you are the right person to do that job. Now, the cool thing about this is after you've done one project or a couple of projects, the communication about what you do and how you do it well hopefully we'll start to snowball. As more people find other friends that are needing websites, you're gonna be a reference for them as someone who can get the job done. So the first couple of projects is probably the hardest and then it may be a little bit easier after that to continue to find more opportunities. So we talked a little bit about good potential types of websites. Maybe it's a small business, maybe it's a small restaurant, something like that. But what does this freelance look like from a development perspective? As we mentioned already, WordPress as a whole, as a platform is extremely, extremely popular and it's easy to use for a consumer or from a marketing perspective. So a lot of times you can take the WordPress platform, you can find a nice theme, you can add a few extensions to add the functionality that you need and then hand that off to a customer. We'll talk more about support in a second, but you can also use WordPress as a headless CMS. This means if you're interested in using Next.js or React or SvelteKit or something like that, and you wanna use WordPress as a headless CMS, you can absolutely do that. You can pull in the data with the REST API or with GraphQL. I actually have a whole video on that that you can reference of pulling in data from WordPress into a Next.js site via GraphQL that you can go watch if you want a hands-on example of that. But WordPress, although some people think it's outdated and not as popular anymore, it is still extremely popular and it's one of the most common ways to build these types of sites and you can improve some of the performance and developer experience benefits of WordPress by using it as a headless CMS. So I want you to think about that could be a great opportunity for you to learn a new framework or just get a more hands-on experience with a framework and use that experience to then talk about in your interviews for future jobs down the road as well. Now, one of the questions that people commonly have is how much do you charge? There's no standard answer for this. The one thing I've done in my career and the advice that I get from other people is continue to raise your rates until you have enough people that are saying no. And I know that makes a lot of us uncomfortable, especially at the beginning when we have no idea how to price. So my first site I did for 500. If I were to have done a few more, I probably would have moved that up to 1,000. And this obviously also depends on the amount of functionality that you're looking to add to this website or they're looking for. So for mine, these were pretty simple sites. It was just informational with a few images. I didn't do any integrations with other platforms or calendar widgets or anything like that. So if you're if they're looking to add things like that, make sure to accommodate for that in your estimate and make sure that it's worth your while the amount of money that you would be asking for. So I think that's something that you'll have to figure out. I think you decide on a price for your first one, see how that goes and see how you feel valued based on that dollar amount and then adjust from there going forward. Another question that people have is what do you do for taxes? And I can give you my personal story. So I set up an LLC a few years ago to accommodate for uh, freelance projects and then also sponsorships that I get on YouTube and uh, other work that I've done. So I've had a personal single member LLC for the last four or five years. And it's actually fairly straightforward to get, I think it costs 300 bucks a year to renew my license. And then I can just uh, record all of my in income and then my expenses inside of a tool like QuickBooks and then pass that PDF off to my accountant at the end of the year and not have to do anything else. So it's actually fairly straightforward if you wanna set up an LLC to protect yourself a little bit, but I think early on, it's not necessarily something that you need, although it can be helpful eventually. All right, support is another question that I think is can be really intimidating, but also really important for you to think about beforehand. So there's a couple of different ways you can manage support for a project or not. 
One is you just don't offer any support. You say, this is a full handoff to you. You now own this website. You own the WordPress installation. You own everything. You have it, and I won't be involved after. I think there's another opportunity for you to offer support and updates thereafter. You can do this by charging a monthly retainer at 10 hours a month or five hours a month or whatever it is for basic updates and troubleshooting. You can also then just charge them an hourly rate to say, hey, my hourly rate beyond this project is going to be $50 an hour, $75 an hour, whatever it is that you think makes sense for you. You could have that be your rate and communicate that to them to let them know if there's any updates, if there's any work that needs to be done, this is going to be the rate that I will charge you at. Now, another aspect of support is not just you supporting the website, but you also being supported. This is another reason why I think Hostinger is an amazing option for people that are looking to get into freelancing is because they offer 99.9% .9 uptime, meaning your website is going to be available the vast majority of the time. And then they also have 24 seven support with a premium shared plan. So that means if something goes wrong, you can get in contact with their support and they can help you debug an issue really quickly, which then enables you to communicate back to your client really quickly, what the problem is, how you're going to fix it, and then hopefully turn around and fix that really quickly as well. So I think it's really important for people to consider if you're gonna invest in infrastructure or a host, and especially if you're looking to build a business around this of freelance, multiple freelance projects, you really wanna pay attention to your support and make sure you have a high level support so that you can also then support your client in the best way possible. Now, I mentioned that Hostinger has its own custom panel. It's called the H panel. And this is something they built themselves because they wanted to provide an amazing experience for managing these websites. And you can see a little bit of a glimpse into mine here. So I actually did a video a few weeks ago on creating and hosting a portfolio project inside of Hostinger. So if you want more hands-on, you can actually go see how to do that. One of the things we did was build a website with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we uploaded that through the file manager here to actually have our website hosted. So it's as easy as going in there, uploading a few files, and your site is ready to go. You can also manage your databases. You have links to the WordPress dashboard. You can go into WordPress. And notice that I'm inside of a specific domain, james-q-quick-demos. One of the cool things about hosting is you get a free domain with the plan that we've been talking about. So that'll carry over for a year. And then you can add multiple different websites in here. You have one-click installs for WordPress. You can also do backups. So you have the option to add a little bit extra cost to do daily backups, which is pretty amazing and pretty important, to be honest, if you're going to, again, have really good support and make sure that you always have a plan for backup. Another cool thing that they have is the shared starter email. This means you can have up to 100 accounts and you can have uh, 50 aliases per account. And you can use this to have a pretty official looking email. So you could potentially host your portfolio site on Hostinger as well as have domained emails so that you can look official when you talk to clients or potential clients. Now they also have some really cool features, things that scan for malware, things that will tell you that your version of uh, WordPress needs to be updated, et cetera. They've got lots of really cool tools built into this panel and it makes managing your sites, I think much easier, especially if you look at doing many under one plan, which I think is a great way to go. So one of the last questions I get from people, we talked about how much to charge, but another last question is how to charge. And you can do, like we said earlier, you can go with an ongoing relationship and maintenance. So you can say, I'm either going to give you X number of hours a week or month, or you can pay me on an hourly basis. Another thing that you can do in terms of charging is you can charge upfront by number of hours based on an estimate. So I think this project will take me 30 hours. It's gonna be $50 an hour, which is gonna be $600. Is that right? That was totally not right. $1,500 at 30 hours at $50 an hour. You can also look at this as a per body of work. So you can, you can talk to them, get a feel for what they need and get a feel for what the value is of the product that you would actually build. For example, if you build a website that then enables them to make X number of additional sales per month or bring in X number of additional customers over a six month span, how many more dollars is that them earning? It may be 5,000, it may be $10,000. So if you can advocate that this is going to bring that level of value, it's going to be worth it in their minds to pay for it. So you can pay for your work on an hourly basis. You can also then charge based on the project or the, or the overall body of work. So all in all, again, in the state that the programming or tech ecosystem is in with layoffs happening 
all over the place. I highly recommend people looking into ways that they can make their own money. I'm not saying you need to pursue that as your career and work for yourself because that's not for everyone and it takes a long time to build that up. But starting to look at opportunities for you to build things yourself and make money yourself, I think is a really empowering thing. Also sets you up for success should something happen unexpected, which unfortunately is happening today. So I'm curious if any of you are doing freelancing, let me know if you have additional tips that you think other people should know from a freelancing perspective that we may have missed in this video. Thanks as always for checking out the video. Make sure to go check out Hostinger at hostinger.com slash James. Use the coupon code James, get a discount off in addition to the Black Friday deal and go and build your own websites to make your own money. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll catch you next time.